In this video, I'm creating Diva <laughs> and show you the whole process starting from a sphere to the final render. All right, game face on. Usually for stylized characters, you try to accentuate certain parts of the face or certain face features to give the character a unique look. I think for her, it's first of all, the big eyes, rather small mouth and nose. And then of course, you couldn't overseed the huge forehead. Of course, I'm trying to make it a little bit more realistic, so I'm going to change the proportions a little bit so that it doesn't look as extreme anymore. For the face, I like to start with the eye holes because they're a good anchor for the face structure because they're usually in the middle of the head and that is fairly easy to place. Creating the basic shape so that we have some sort of triangle in the face that we can consider a nose. It's kind of like a Chad chin right now. <laughs> I'm probably going to change that a little bit. Her face is quite round, so I'm going to round out that chin a little bit. Let's add the eyes right there. Just round circles first and then we can add another layer on top which is the fat smoothing everything out so that it looks a little bit more feminine if you will looks a little tired right now <laughs> i think it's going in the right direction of course it doesn't really look like her right now don't worry we're get, we're getting there i hope i'm gonna add the body afterwards with retopology so i don't have to worry about the neck structure that much so i'm just gonna bring in the basic proportions but it doesn't have to be perfect at all she's from korea so i have korean people as references she doesn't really look that korean so i kind of tried to find balance between making her look more korean and keeping her look that she has in the stylized version but i think this looks pretty good now of course she isn't bald so we need to actually add hair as well Now let's clean up the geometry. Let me show you my favorite add-on that I've ever discovered. First, you grab the head that you want to use. Then you add some pins to both of them. <laughs> and then we immediately have better looking geometry. Now we're going to do some doctoring because we have the head and the neck. Let's place the inside of the mouth where it's roughly supposed to be. And then we need to sew the two pieces back together. I remove the mouth when I fuse the two meshes together just to avoid any problems. The mouth is attached. Let's do some head transplant. Mark the cutoff point for the head. Remove the head. We have to be careful. Very risky maneuvers. Never been done before. Then we need to reattach the geometry again. Remove the scars with the smooth brush. <laughs> okay, I think I <laughs> I think the body is a little too small. Let's make it a little little bigger. Oh, maybe that's a little too much. The UVs are already optimized for the face scan texture that I want to use. So I can just grab a skin shader from an old file. Okay, maybe that looks a little different than I expected. <laughs> Let's get rid of that old makeup. Add a quick roughness texture with the vertex painting. White basically means glossy and black means uh, rough. I guess. She's looking kind of stiff right now, so let's give her a pose. Let's just grab the basic meta ray skeleton. Make sure that they look right from the front as well as from the side. The hand is the most trickiest one. Always keep in mind the rotation of the bones, that there's one axis that points inwards basically. And then of course the eyes need to be rigged as well. Use bone constraints to focus the eye bones. And then if we move them around, they actually follow. And to kind of get rid of these horrific injuries that she's currently having with her skeleton, <laughs> I need to change the, uh, the weight painting a little bit. And then we have some pretty nice deformations. For the pose, I wanted to copy or sort of recreate one of her victory poses. Rotate the hips, rotate the upper body, and then of course make her look at the camera. Ah! For this hairstyle, we can abuse the interpolation function quite well. We're going to lay out some individual hair strands to kind of define the shape. And then we can just take all the interpolation settings in the add brush. And then by adding the brush, you can see, do the same for the front and then do the same for the side. And now let's turn this innocent girl into the fearsome esports goddess that she is. And this is basically where the suffering begins. I am someone that doesn't like polymodeling, basically just moving geometry around to create the shapes that I need. But for this, of course, I have to do it not only for the headset, but also for the suit that's going to follow. And that's going to be a lot of boredom. To add some more thickness to the model, we can just use the solidify modifier. I usually also like to use the bevel modifier to around the edges just a little bit. For the second layer of hair, I actually learned a new trick, which is basically just to grab the first layer of hair, then remove most of the existing hair and use the few hairs that are still there to guide these new strands. It's quite tedious, but you know, it'll make the hairstyle look way, way better. Trust me. Thank you. 
The way I like to create the makeup for my characters is basically just to create a new mask texture, which is black. And then I'm going to basically just draw in white the areas where the new color is supposed to be. I have this mixed note here, which is red. And then if I just draw on the lip, you can see we can create this red lipstick very, very quickly. Let's make her face a little brighter, add some redness to her face, and then add the eyeliner as well. That looks pretty good. So modeling the suit is basically like a retopology if you do it manually, which means you grab a plane and then you just draw it out to create the individual shapes that you need. For some pieces like the core, you actually need to model the whole thing. But for some other, like for example, this uh, inside of the core, we can just use a few modifiers to add some thickness and of course some roundness as well. So we can save some time there, but it's still miserable. <laughs> I don't want to drag you through the whole process. So uh, let's make this a little quicker. Okay, the suit is finished and I also added the movement to it. So basically that it follows the bones as well. The way you can do that is by transferring the weights of the body over to the new suit pieces, I guess. And after doing that for every single piece, we have the finished model. Diva, ready for combat. Now let's add the basic colors. Pose the hair maybe a little different. Now to finish the whole thing, let's create the lighting. Three. And after adding some small finishing touches, here we have the final version. Here's Diva with RTX enabled. <laughs> Looking good. Winky face, suiting up. High score for sure. If you have any questions or suggestions, make sure to put them in the comments. Thank you for watching. Maybe I'll see you next time. See ya.